Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Mark Saxon from Tasman Metals. How are you today, Mark? All right, Tracy, very well, thank you. Mark, you just recently put out some news about the completion of a magnetic separation plant for the Norikar uh, Heavy Rare Earth Element Project. Can you tell us a little bit about this news? Uh, yes, thanks, Tracy. We've just finished a magnetic separation pilot plant, and that was to do a, um, a scaled-up test of our beneficiation process, which for Norikar is, uh, is magnetic separation. So that was... Uh, uh, a test run in Finland. Uh, it was paid for by the European Commission under our EU Air project, and uh, it performed very well. We're very pleased with the results. All right. So, in addition to that, there was something that I thought was very interesting in your news release. It said you managed to take what was previously deemed waste product, a nepheline byproduct, and you found a way to commercialize this. Could you start by explaining to us at Investor Intel, and maybe the rest of our audience knows what nepheline is, but uh, give us an understanding of what you have here. This sounds exciting. Yeah, most certainly. And it's, and it's a little bit different to what most companies are dealing with. And in fact, the Norishar project was first worked by a, a Swedish mining company, Bulleden, for nepheline rather than for rare earths. And so it's had quite a long history there. So nepheline is a mineral, it's not a metal. And uh, nepheline will go into the ceramics industry, the glass industry. Um, it can go into cosmetics, it can go into building fillers, um, it can go into many, many end uses. Um, Europe is a very large market for nepheline, and um, when you think of roof tiles and bricks and um, when you think of Italian uh, ceramics or, or Spanish ceramics, uh, all of that is using nepheline, and so it's a very large market. Um, for the rocket Nora Shah, about 65% of the material in the ground is in fact nepheline, and, uh, and under our PFS, we had to deal with that as a waste product because we didn't have our products worked out. Um, the work we're doing now is to get those, uh, to get the nepheline into some end markets, and uh, so we can understand the value of that in particular, but also um, understand the environmental mental benefit it can have as well, because it uh, is using our waste material, and uh, we're sort of we've got the aim there to have a, a very low waste mine or even a zero waste mine if possible. So if we could just go back to the results, though, it, it seemed to me based on your comments in the news release that you were very pleased with the results. I think you said that it uh, mirrors the bench scale test work. Can you tell us a little bit more about what, what this actually means? Uh, when we've done our, our bench scale test work, we have used a whole range of, of uh, machines in order to see uh, what performs the best. Uh, the pilot plant that was available to us under the EU Rare program that we could use for free was not the best equipment that is available and is not the material, not the equipment that has performed the best for us. However, it still works very well. Um, the thing that was very pleasing was that um, our bench scale uh, work uh, matched our pilot plant work, and really that shows that the uh, the processes can be scaled up. Um, when we do our our final test work, it will be done with the optimized machinery, and uh, we'll see higher recoveries. But uh, we achieved almost 80% recovery with a, a non-optimized uh, machinery, and uh, we're very pleased with that. And of course, I, I think I just want to draw attention to this research partner. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you facilitated this? Because this seems like a real win-win for both sides. Yeah, sure. The, the EU Rare project in, in Europe is, a, uh, is an ongoing project, and it's been running for uh, three years. I believe it's got one year to go. Um, it's been funded with uh, 10 million euros, and uh, its aim is to reduce the risk of rare earth metals uh, inside of Europe. So um, certainly quite a bit of our work is done under that program. Uh, we've done uh, quite a bit of um, large-scale drilling. We've done uh, this beneficiation plant. And we're now moving on to some hydrometallurgy work under the EU Rep project that will be uh, funded again by the European Commission. Okay, well, I find that very fascinating. I don't know if you've noticed, but we've all been, uh, I've been talking to everybody in the industry about Dudley Kingsnorth's uh, recent presentation and the impact of illegal rare earths from China on the overall market and pricing. I'd love to know your comments on this because, Mark, you are one of our leaders in the industry. Yeah, well, certainly. Uh, yeah, I, I follow Dudley's work very closely, and uh, yeah, he obviously uh, has a very good understanding of the balance of, uh, of what's consumed versus what's produced. And I, I certainly believe that there is, is some missing metal, I suppose, that, uh, that has to be coming from illegal mining. Certainly, I would have liked to have seen uh, the illegal production be reduced from the market a lot more quickly than it has. Um, I think we're going to have to stay with it for, uh, for many more years. Um, it's very hard to reduce that amount of uh, material. But um, I guess it's now up to the customers to say, yeah, are they prepared to be part of that supply chain or, or are they looking for alternative sources and uh, things that are more sustainable both on a business case and also on an environmental case. And um, that's really up to the customers now. 
Okay, well, I believe that that was uh, Dudley's uh, recommendation as well, is that the customers need to apply more pressures without an understanding of the, the large impact they're having on uh, rare earths for uh, the entire global market. Um, now, I noticed that uh, you elected to withdraw your application for a mining lease for your Ulcerum, Ulcerum, did I pronounce that properly? Rare Earth Project? Close can you, enough, yes. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about this? And, and it sounds to me like it's a reflection of the overall uh, sector presently. Mm. Yeah, certainly. We, uh, uh, I think it was 2013, we put in a mining lease application for our Ulcerum project um, based on having completed a, um, a, a small internal scoping study and, uh, and showing that it was a, an interesting project, having completed a resource and, and some drilling. And... Uh, we decided to go through with a, a, a mining lease. However, um, we had uh, uh, done all the work we had to do for that stage. However, at this stage, we need to be submitting more information. And uh, more information obviously comes with more cost. And, uh, and so we have decided rather than incur that cost now, we shall move back to working on our exploration licenses and, uh, and continue on exploration licenses rather than the mining lease. Um, and obviously, it does reflect the market and, and, um, and how difficult it is to, to raise finance and, uh, and I guess the long-term view we need to be taking with rare earth metals. Um, it's a very good project. It's got um, uh, a very simple mineralogy. It, um, it beneficiates well. And uh, the flow sheet is, is very well known for, for xenotile and monazite um, that's, that uh, occurs at the site there. But uh, um, it's not a project we need to rush ahead with, I suppose. And of course, Mark, you have a lot of die-hard fans and shareholders in the industry. I mean, you've been a leader for many years now. Can you tell us what we should anticipate for the new year? Yeah, well, certainly. Uh, all I can say is I hope the new year is uh, is not as difficult as the past year. And, and really, um, rare earth is not alone, and, and it's been challenging for, for every part of the mining sector. And uh, it, it certainly looks like the Toronto Venture Exchange will be finishing at a at an all-time low at the end of this year, unfortunately. And so it's been a very difficult time. Um, I think in the rare earth sector now, it's a, it's a much smaller market. Um, all of the projects that are now being funded do have a chance of success. Um, they won't all be successful, but, uh, but they're all, all reasonable projects. Um, so they all do deserve funding now, and, um, and hopefully the funding can be attracted for all those projects. And um, we all need to slow down, and we need to be very cautious of our expenditure. Um, and I think as in the way that Tasman has done, we have um, increased the products we can produce on site there. Um, and so we, we need to... Uh, get a broader base of revenue, I suppose, in order to support rare earth metals while the prices are low. And, uh, and then when the industry turns, I think, uh, yeah, there'll be three, four, five companies that are very well positioned to take advantage of that. Well, Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to, to get an update. No problem, Tracy. Thanks very much.